Kentucky basketball is about to come to the end of their non-conference slate. But first, one more tune-up before UK faces the Gators. You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on into Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for Sports Illustrated for various SEC-related things. But on this podcast, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. You can download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, we are going to be previewing Kentucky versus Illinois State. Statistically, the worst opponent that UK has left on the schedule. If, is this a tune-up game before the Wildcats travel to Gainesville to play the Gators? Pretty much we'll dive into the good, the bad, and what we expect out of this matchup. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. Want to remind everyone out there that we are free and available on all platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the show. If you're listening on podcast, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed there as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. The Illinois State Redbirds going to talk about what they do well, what they don't do well, and then we are going to transition to the matchups, what we think Kentucky is going to attack, what may be a struggle for the Wildcats, and then we'll give a final score prediction at the end of the show. So Illinois State, as of right now, 194th in the Kim Palm ratings, out of the Missouri Valley Conference. 8-4 and four is their record. They've lost to St. Louis, High Point, Wright State, and Norfolk State. Just a quick little trivia question for those out there that pay attention to everything going on in college basketball. Of those four teams, St. Louis, High Point, Wright State, and Norfolk State, which one would you guess is highest in the Kim Palm ratings? It is High Point, who is 10-4 and four right now. That is, the I think, the most interesting game on Illinois State's schedule, it was a 74-72 to 72 loss. Really close game uh, there towards the end. Illinois State had a pretty solid chance to take this one and then just kind of, I think, towards the final uh, just couple of minutes uh, was not able to close things out. Their best win on the season so far has come against Illinois Chicago on the road, top 150 team in Kim Palm for reference, by the way. I love Kim Palm. I love their ratings. I love how they rank things. I love how they break things down. If you need a reference point for how good, how bad, how okay an opponent may be, I just want to let you know that the worst team in the SEC, the Vanderbilt Commodores, is currently ranked 212th. Illinois State is 194. And that's pretty low, all things considered, because you start to get to some bottom-of-the-barrel teams uh, the further you scroll down in not just Ken Palm, but across other metrics uh, online. So Illinois State, not the best team, not the strongest strength of schedule. In fact, it's one of the worst in the country. Their non-con slate is really, really bad. Uh, They've not faced a lot of teams that are good offensively, which is really interesting to note. St. Louis, by the way, the reason I wanted to do that exercise about high point, St. Louis uh, for the past couple of years has been really good with their point guard, Yuri Collins. Uh, Not the case this season, as I am pretty sure uh, Yuri has graduated. Uh, So, Illinois State, weak schedule. Not statistically the strongest team, uh, but they're not as bad as Vanderbilt, uh, which is really interesting. I wonder what would happen if the Commodores and the Redbirds played at a neutral site. For those of you that may know, Illinois State, home of former uh, Redbird Antonio Reeves, who has been playing with the Wildcats for now a season and change. This will be the Antonio Reeves Bowl as we have been tabbing it here on the show. What do the Redbirds do well? Well, like I mentioned earlier, they've not faced a lot of teams that are really good offensively, but they've still managed to hold their own. Their defense is top 120, according to Kim Palm. And I think the big thing here is that they create a lot of havoc when it comes to non-steal turnovers, something that Kentucky over these past few games 
has been more prone to give up. Now, Kentucky has not been turning the ball over a ton, um, if at all. I believe they're still top three in the country in turnover percentage, but that is something to monitor here. They do not play with a lot of pace, but their opponents have consistently coughed up the ball, uh, and they're pretty solid in steal percentage as well. Turnover percentage overall is at 19% on defense, which is not half bad. So I think that's the big strength here. Their effective field goal percentage is solid. Again, like I mentioned, they've not played a lot of strong offensive teams. When it comes to their point distribution, there's nothing really to take away here other than the fact that they just kind of allow things occasionally. But overall, there's not like one major tipping point. It's not like, oh, they allow a ton of uh, points from three. It's not like, oh, they allow teams to distribute the basketball particularly well. They don't really allow teams to get to the foul line a ton, which is also something that they do very well. So Illinois State, uh, not necessarily great on defense, all things considered, um, but they're not bad either, which is something that we need to note. What do the Redbirds not do well, statistically? It's their entire offense. The defense, eh. The offense, not so much. They are currently 288th nationally in adjusted efficiency on offense. For reference, Kentucky is 13th. They cannot shoot the three. They shoot less than 28% from beyond the arc. They are decent from inside the arc, but the big thing that they do is they get to the foul line quite a bit, and they're an an average free throw shooting team. I will be curious to see if they can accomplish that against the Wildcats in this matchup. I'm not quite sure if they're going to be able to to get to the the charity stripe as consistently as they would like, but we will we will monitor that. We'll see what happens in this one. Individual players that you should be aware of. I'm going to give you three here, and I'm not just going to be going to give you the top three scores. I'm actually going to start with the fourth leading scorer on this team, Kendall Lewis, averaging 24 or, yeah 24 minutes a game, averaging almost nine points, five and a half rebounds, and assists per contest while shooting 61.5% from the floor and 36% from beyond the arc. Cam Palm really likes this dude. He is not necessarily an extremely dominant player for them. He's listed as a role player, but whenever he has been called upon uh, this season, he's been been pretty efficient as opposed to some other shooters and some other forwards uh, on this roster who have been uh, relatively ineffective, uh, all things considered. He is the first player that I'm looking at. How will he match up with somebody like a Duthiero? Or Justin Edwards, we'll see. He's pretty consistent at the rim, as Kendall Lewis cannot allow a ton of stuff there. Dalton Banks is the other player I want to look at here. 11 points per game, almost four assists per contest as well, shooting 37% from beyond the arc, only shooting 63% from the uh, from the foul line, which is really not good. Uh, he is the second leading scorer on this team. And then Darius Buford, who I actually knew randomly, and this is not me flexing, oh, look at what I know about college basketball. He played at Elon for two seasons before transferring to Illinois State. He's their leading scorer at 13.7 points per game, only shooting 22% from beyond the arc. So the two shot chuckers on this team, um, one of them's pretty decent um, from beyond the arc, not a great field goal percentage overall. The other one can't shoot uh, at all uh, from beyond the arc, really struggling there, um, but is significantly better at the charity stripe and slightly decent, uh, decent more decent uh, inside the arc. So they've got a couple of guards that like to hoist a ton of shots. Uh, Both of them over 100 field goal attempts. The next closest player is at 88 shot attempts. So they've got two players there that they really like to use. And then the other player that I'm not necessarily looking at matchup-wise, because I think Kentucky's guards can, can really run, I think, with Buford and Banks, Brandon Lieb, a 7'1", 230-pound center. Why am I highlighting Brandon Lieb, who only plays 12 minutes a game for a couple of reasons. Number one, Illinois State uh, is 326th nationally in average height. They've got a very short team across the board. Um, Brandon Lieb is the only player in their rotation who is higher or who is taller than uh, six foot eight. And he is one of the major contributors when he is on the floor according to Ken Palm. The way that Ken Palm breaks things down, by the way, there's all these different numbers, but it shows you their different rotations. It shows the depth chart over the past five games, 
and it'll show you which players are essentially the most ball dominant or impact the game the most whenever they are on the court. Darius Buford is a major contributor. He is used, let's see here, he is used on 24.3% of possessions. Brandon Lieb is used on 24.7% of possessions whenever he is in the game. Both of those are pretty high. For reference, the highest go-to guy, significant tribu- contributor for the Wildcats is Rob Dillingham. He's used on nearly 29% of possessions when he is on the court. So again, Dalton Banks, Barry, uh, Darius Buford, the two guards here you're going to look want to look at. Kendall Lewis, I think, is an interesting matchup at the rim. And then Brandon Lieb, whenever he is in the game, he is able to make an impact. They also let this dude shoot threes. He is shooting at seven foot one. He's shooting 34.8% from the field. That is awful, but he's going to get some touches whenever he's in uh, the contest. How does he match up with Aaron Bradshaw, possibly away from the rim more than he would like, or Trey Mitchell away from the rim more than they would like? It will be interesting. So those are the things that the Redbirds do well and the things that they don't. Bad offense, okay defense, not really proven thus far. Kentucky is by far the most difficult contest that they have, and it will be the most difficult opponent that they have on the schedule. What will Kentucky do to attack this team? Kind of a tune-up before you play the Gators. I want to dive into that in just a second. Before I do that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Game Time. Let's say, hypothetically, that you want to get some last-minute tickets to this game against Illinois State tomorrow. I'm recording this on Thursday. This game tips off at 7 p.m. Eastern on the SEC Network. Maybe instead of watching it on the SEC Network, you want to get some last-minute tickets. You don't need to stress about it. There is one place that you need to go. It is game time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're trying to buy tickets to your next big event, and game time is the fast and very easy way to buy tickets for all the different uh, kinds of events, actually, in your area, sports, music, comedy, theater, all that good stuff. Killer last-minute deals from Game Time. They are all in prices. They've got views from your seat, and then they have their best price guarantee, which means if you find tickets in the same section and row for less elsewhere, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. It's really awesome what Game Time's got going on. I have used them. I actually use them quite a bit uh, this college football season. It was great to be able to go around to a couple of different SEC spots of uh, Literally just for fun, thanks to Game Time, getting some last-minute deals, uh, really awesome deals uh, at a couple of different SEC venues. I would highly encourage you guys, if you're looking for tickets for Kentucky basketball, if you're looking for some games upcoming here in the SEC slate, Game Time is the place to be. You can download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College to get $20 off your first purchase. Again, you can download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase terms apply. You need to download Game Time today. It is last minute tickets, the lowest price guaranteed. All right, continuing along here on the Thursday edition of Locked On Kentucky, Lance Dahl hanging out here with you. Really appreciate you making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. If you have not subscribed to the show already, would really appreciate it if you went ahead. And did that, if you're listening on podcast, would appreciate it if you subscribe there as well. Uh, I want to reiterate here, normally do this about midway through the show. If you have any questions for the show, whether you're watching on YouTube or on podcast, you can leave that in the YouTube comments below or hit me on the socials at Locked on UK on Twitter. Would love to discuss whatever you have to say about Kentucky basketball. Speaking of Kentucky basketball, this game again against Illinois State again tomorrow, Friday, December 29th, tipping off at 7 p.m. Eastern. What will the Wildcats do to attack the Illinois State Redbirds? You could go a number of directions here because, like I stated, Illinois State's defense is not that bad, but they've not really faced a lot of teams that are able to truly challenge them. Kentucky will be, I would argue, on paper, leagues above anybody else that they have faced off against this season. In fact, we can just go ahead and go here to the little opponent tracker and we can look at the adjusted offensive efficiency. The best team that they have faced was Wright State, who was 52nd in adjusted offensive efficiency, and they lost that game 74 to 49. So you're seeing what we're dealing with here uh, whenever the uh, the Redbirds face off against a semi-competent offense. And actually Wright State is the 
team that's far above and beyond any other team that they've faced on that side of the ball. So Kentucky can, I think, focus on not screwing up like they did against UNC Wilmington. That's essentially where my takeaways for this game start and end. You cannot allow yourself to sleepwalk into this one. Excuse me. This falls in a very interesting spot on your schedule. You just came off against a big-time win against a struggling rival in Louisville. You now return home to face off against the worst team left on your schedule before you go on the road and play a very difficult conference game to open up SEC play against Florida. That's going to be tough. Where are these players at mentally right now? Very curious how Kentucky starts this game. I really do hope that they wake up and they get after the Redbirds early in this one because you cannot allow the defensive lapses that you had against the UNC Wilmington, I believe Seahawks, if I'm not mistaken. Shot selection, I think, is going to be very important in this one. This ties in with not being sleepy or lackadaisical, uh, if that's how you pronounce that word, on the uh, on the offensive end of the floor. You have to be able to find some efficient shots in, in this one. And because of your height, because of your speed, because of your aggression and athleticism and the fact that it's home court, I mean, Kentucky should be able to find themselves in favorable favorable spots against this Redbird defense pretty consistently, whether that be at the rim or from beyond the arc. Sometimes you just have a cold shooting night. You can always rely, I think, on guys like Aaron Bradshaw or guys like Rob Dillingham to consistently find the, uh, the rim and drive it in and score. Antonio Reeves, this is something actually that we talked about on, I think, the recap episode for Louisville. Reeves has done a significantly better job this year as opposed to last season, at getting to the rim and scoring more effectively. He's using his body more aggressively. He's getting there. He's creating contact, and he's finishing. Dillingham and Reeves, the two most ball-dominant players Kentucky has, I think may take advantage of that speed and finish pretty consistently in this one. Um, DJ Wagner is somebody else to watch there as well, somebody that's uber-aggressive at times when it comes to driving down the lane. I think Kentucky's offense does a great job of creating some of those opportunities I think they'll I think they'll get some uh I don't want to say easy touches but opportunities uh in this one. So I think the guard play is going to be solid whether or not they do shoot well from beyond the arc or not. I don't really think that you need a ton of threes in this one to take down the Redbirds again. Not necessarily going to wow you with pace, not going to wow you with their outside shots or efficiency. Of course, I say that and they will walk into Rupp Arena and they'll start like five of eight from beyond the arc in the first like 13 minutes of the game. And then we'll be looking up and saying, okay, crap, what on earth is going on? It's kind of what's happened over the past uh, few uh, non-con games here uh, in Rupp Arena. Uh, so who knows? We'll see what happens there. I think that another player to watch out for in this one for UK is Adu Thiero, who does not get a ton of touches and is now sitting behind Aaron Bradshaw, which is what it is because Bradshaw's good. But also, I really do hope that the arrow continues to be used. Um, very solid when it comes to, again, talking about playing aggressive and just getting to the rim and scoring. I think the arrow could have some opportunities in this one. I don't know if Illinois State has a player that matches up well with him offensively outside of the guy that I mentioned earlier in Kendall Lewis, who is a veteran player, is a senior. We will have to wait and see. This is a very experienced Illinois State team, by the way. If they had Antonio Reeves, they may be one of the best in the country in that department. Um but UK, I think, is going to take this one. I think they're going to be able to get to the rim and score. I think that they will play well on the defensive side of the basketball. 84-64 to 64 is the final score prediction. On Ken Palm, I will go 80-61. to 61. That will be my final score prediction there. If you've got a score prediction, please leave it in the YouTube comments below. If you're going to this game, let me know. Let me know what you think about this matchup uh, in the comments below as well. That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Kentucky. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore. And you can follow the show on Twitter, uh, or excuse me, on Instagram. That is at Kentucky Podcast. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave those in the YouTube comments below. Hit me on the socials. I will see you all tomorrow for another episode of Locked On Kentucky. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and God bless. God bless.